James, you know, a lot of people had had really bad investment advice told to them this <laughs> this year so far. What's yours? Uh, well, I think we have been bullish on Southeast Asia at the beginning of this year, and it has worked out uh, fairly well. Um, I think Southeast Asia has been fairly uh, resilient from a year-to-date perspective. Uh, but, I mean, recently going into all these market turbulence, we have actually taken some profits out of our Southeast Asia core. Uh, so I think a new one's approach, geographical uh, diversification, and uh, I think differentiation on where the earnings are going to come from, is going to be very important uh, going forward. Okay, so Southeast Asia still? So do I still chase Indonesia? Uh, well, I think right now we have taken profit on Indonesia. We have turned to neutral, but mm. we think uh, places like Thailand actually looks interesting, really because of the recovery uh, of uh, global tourism and, of course, uh, the reopening and consumption there is still fairly robust. So I think Thailand is one market that we continue to be overweight uh, in Southeast Asia. Uh, James, it seems like, you know, from a market's perspective, that uh, this quarter started off with the mood music just changing a little bit on how the Federal Reserve is going to behave and also some cracks uh, just opening up with the sort of unified language that they had previously. Uh, how does that play out? If we do see slower interest rate hikes coming through, what difference does it make for what you cover? Uh, well, I think at this stage, what's happened with the Fed and central banks is that they are going all out to kind of uh, bring inflation down. And I think that's the top priority by the Federal Reserve. Uh, it's quite clear that they would want a slowdown in growth. And I think where the, the difficulty is, of course, is the labour market, which is going to be very important to watch out for. And it might take some lags, a few months, before labour market actually slows down considerably. So that's going to be quite... Uh, uncertain. And I think how markets are going to play out in the next few weeks and in the months is that you're going to get, if you do get slower economic growth, it will be perceived as good news. So it, it's kind of uh, strange that you're going to have, well, bad news in the economic data front might be actually good news for financial markets uh, because the Fed would not tighten as much. So I think that's going to be the dynamics, at least for the next few weeks, until we do get a decisive turn in the labour market and inflation. Uh, and, you know, one of the things that we witnessed, of course, and uh, uh, David alluded to, you know, the short end, we've been seeing twos and fives, just uh, seeing, you know, these spikes up, and then we've seen a little bit of a fallback. Uh, how does that influence and inform you about where you should be in the investment grade space? Uh, well, I think in terms of our investment uh, grade uh, bonds, we think that one should be at the shorter end, uh, really because of there's lots of uncertainty, especially on the long end, where the economic uh, trajectory will be. But in the shorter end, we think a lot of the rate hike increases have already been in the price, unless we do get significant surprises uh, on the inflation front. But if not, I think the shorter end would be quite a defensive uh, sector, giving you a good use and, of course, ultimately helping investors to get that extra income and that diversification in portfolios in this very uh, uncertain uh, period. Right. You also like um, Hong Kong. Uh, we're about to show our viewers and you probably know where valuations are and, you know, we're at single digits really even up until next year. I mean, is that a value trap? Uh, well, I think for Hong Kong, uh, we are overweight in the Hong Kong market. Uh, it's it's uh, a call in which it's based on valuations, really, because a lot of valuations uh, in the Hong Kong market is actually uh, very compelling at this stage. But importantly, of course, with reopening, there's going to be increase in pent-up demand. Uh, you're going to see, of course, the, the return of tourism. And all these would actually bode well very much on the earnings front uh, for Hong Kong stocks. So if you combine uh, an earnings recovery as well as the press uh, valuation, there might be quite interesting uh, opportunities uh, for Hong Kong equities uh, going forward. Okay, well, let's have a look at uh, the earnings picture. But the earnings season will be upon us fairly soon. Uh, give us a sense of what you're expecting and especially looking at the forecast that they're going to be making. Uh, well, I think earnings season is going to be key uh, because economic growth is slowing down globally. So, of course, uh, guidance would be going uh, downwards as well. So there will be an adjustment uh, downwards in terms of earnings forecasts across the board. And that's something that uh, one should be watching out uh, for. But nevertheless, I think what's also important is that in terms of earnings multiple, a lot of the bad news in terms of recession risk, in terms of slowdown and growth has already been in the price 
And I think that will provide some support uh, for equity markets. But nevertheless, of course, um, generally speaking, uh, consensus earnings is going to uh, be uh, moved uh, downwards.